I'm gonna start recording. This is for 500 pounds right here. Let's go, come on. It's like not. <laughs> he thinks he's big. Let's go, come on. Push it, breathe. Too easy, look at that, lightweight. He doesn't want a second one. <laughs> Do you ever feel like one leg is constantly taking the brunt of a load during a workout? You know, that nagging feeling when you feel like you're working harder on one side than the other? Trust me, I get it. It can be frustrating, painful, and it can also be a sign of a leg length discrepancy. But the question is, when does a slight difference between your leg lengths become a bigger issue where you risk long-term complications? Today, we're gonna to talk about something that many of us might experience, a leg length discrepancy or an LLD for short, which is when one leg is shorter than the other side. So we're gonna go over what causes a discrepancy, how do you know if you have one or not, and when you should get it checked out before it can wreak major havoc on your joints and long-term health. Now it's important to understand that there's two main types of leg length discrepancy, anatomical or functional. An anatomical discrepancy means there's an actual difference in bone length between your legs, which can be either acquired or congenital. An acquired anatomical discrepancy means that it's from a traumatic accident that you had where you fractured your bone and you developed either a malunion where it healed unevenly, or it could be that it, you damaged your growth plates while you were still growing, thus it stunted the growth on that one side. It could also be due to things like bone infection, tumors, or even neurological conditions. Now, a congenital anatomical discrepancy means that some people are just born with one leg shorter than the other side. Conditions like fibular hemomelia, congenital femoral deficiency, abnormal normal unilateral growth defects. These can all have an impact on your body's ability to grow even legs. Now, when we talk about functional discrepancies, it can get a little bit tricky because your bones might actually be the same length, but due to muscle tightness, joint restrictions, or even posture problems, your body appears to have a shorter leg. A lot of times a patient will have tighter muscles near their hip and it'll pull it up so much that it causes a hip hike that can make it seem like they have a shorter leg on that side even though the bones themselves are the same length. Okay, functional discrepancies usually won't show up on an x-ray. So how do you know which type of discrepancy you might have? Well, a doctor can perform a physical exam and assess your muscle tone, your joint mobility, and even your posture to determine if you have an anatomical or functional discrepancy, but I suggest you get a referral to an orthopedic surgeon because some doctors actually misdiagnose discrepancies more more often than you'd like to think. But for the purpose of this video, we'll be talking about anatomical discrepancies as the treatment can be a little bit more involved. First, take a look at yourself in the mirror. Do your hips or shoulders seem uneven? Do you have a tilt in your pelvis? These can all be signs that one leg is taking more weight or carrying more brunt of the load than the other side. Next, think about how you move. Do you find yourself limping? Is your stride noticeably shorter on one side? Or do you find it hard to stand for long periods of time? Or do you have trouble running or jumping without pain? These could all be a sign of a discrepancy. So let's say you have a discrepancy. Why should you consider getting it looked at? Well, here's the thing. Ignoring a leg length discrepancy can lead to some serious problems down the road. When one leg is shorter than the other, it throws everything out of whack and it puts extra stress on your lower back, your hips, your knees, and even your ankles. I call it the kinetic chain of pain. And over time, this stress can lead to premature joint degeneration, which means pre-arthritic conditions, which is fancy words for early onset of osteoarthritis, which is basically when the cartilage inside your joints begins to wear down and you get bone on bone grinding. It's really painful, it can limit your mobility, especially if you're an active person. Another consequence of not getting your discrepancy looked at could be muscle imbalances and tightness, okay? As your body starts to compensate for the unevenness between your legs, some muscles are gonna get overworked while others become weak and tight. This can lead to you know pain and difficulty with movement. I remember when I used to do back day at the gym and I would do these heavy deadlifts, I would get these severe muscle spasms in my lower lumbar region of my right side, all the time, okay? It really sucked and I hated to train back and do you know, any type of like heavy squatting or anything like that for stability. It was hell to pay for the rest of the day. So that was a sign that I had a major discrepancy. Another problem that could develop is something called induced or functional scoliosis, which is basically a sideways curvature of your spine. And if it's not corrected, that itself could lead to vertebral disc degeneration, which is definitely not good. The bottom line is, if left unchecked, a leg length discrepancy can have this domino effect of your entire musculoskeletal system and that kinetic chain of pain is much better to catch early and address the issue before long-term complications start knocking on your door. All right, so what is the discrepancy threshold? How big of a difference are we talking about? Is one inch difference something to you know worry about? Well, the good news is that our body is extremely efficient, okay? A minor leg length discrepancy of about one centimeter or less is 
not that big of a concern. In fact, most people, I'd say about 90% of the population or so, actually has uneven leg lengths and they don't even know about it, okay? It doesn't bother them and they live perfectly normal lives. However, when the difference starts to get around, you know, let's say two centimeters or more and that person's very active, that's when things can get a little bit complicated. This larger imbalance can throw your body out of alignment and it can lead to bigger problems that we discussed earlier. All right, so who should get checked for a leg length discrepancy? Well, if you're experiencing any of the symptoms that we've talked about, or you've had a fracture of your lower leg, a growth plate, it's worth mentioning to your doctor as these can sometimes lead to uneven bone growth. It's also a good idea for athletes and people with physically demanding jobs to get checked out because the constant stress on your body can exacerbate the discrepancy and it can lead to, you know, disc degeneration joint cartilage breakdown and you know all kinds of issues later on down the line so how do you get your discrepancy measured how do we know how big the difference is between the two leg lengths well the tried and true way to go about it is the block method and then a full-length standing x-ray for the block method the surgeon is gonna put blocks of a known height under the foot of the shorter leg until your hips appear relatively level and then the thickness of the block stack then gives the surgeon a rough estimate of your discrepancy. Then a full length standing body or x-ray is going to give the surgeon an inside look at your body bone structure so they can accurately measure the actual bone lengths of each leg and confirm the diagnosis and determine the exact amount of your anatomical discrepancy. All right, so what are some of the treatment options for a leg length discrepancy? Well, orthotics and shoe lifts are common ways to treat minor discrepancies, but they only work when you wear shoes or sandals with a shoe build inside of them. For a more significant discrepancy or for a more permanent fix, there's another option, limb lengthening surgery. It's the surgery which this channel is all about, okay? It's the procedure where the surgeon actually breaks and lengthens the shorter bone. It's a big process, but if you have significant issues, you know, with your shorter leg height, it might just make sense for you, okay? It did for me, and it does for thousands of patients all around the world each and every year. It started about 20 years ago before they really had the surgery, right? Um, and and I went in there and they gave me the, the shoe lifts and I would use like, you know, two millimeter for me. I'd get up to 10. And then, I, you know, max you could pack in a shoe was like 15 millimeters or something. And I had to get up to like, you know, 25, whatever 2.5 centimeters is. I think it's 25. Yeah. And um, I, I had the problem where then I would have the shoe modified, right? And when I'm 20 years old, and I say I was cool and have confidence, but when you have a big shoe, you're not cool, right? So I wouldn't wear it. The doctor's like, you're going to have back problems later in life. And I just, I wouldn't wear it because, I mean, you've seen the big shoe. They, oh, tried, yeah. they tried, they do a great job. It doesn't look good, right? Yeah. And then I'd run into the problem. I'd finally get used to it. And then maybe I'd go to the pool for the day and run around without, without shoes. And my back would be just out. Wow. You know, because you, you know, because then you're walking around without it. Or even if you take a long shower, walk around the house, you mm -hmm. always have to wear one flip flop or, and, and that kind of stuff just, it, it wouldn't, if I would have wore it all the time, maybe it might've fixed it, but it wasn't for someone just out doing a lot of stuff outdoors. It's just not, not realistic to have it. And then when I had, started having major back issues and I was starting to miss work and I was in bed a lot. And I just, I said, maybe they can do something for it now. And I looked it up and I found a doctor here in Phoenix yeah. uh, that, that, well, he specializes in other orthopedic stuff, but, but he does that also. Mm -hmm. um, went and talked to him and he's like, we can do it. And it's covered by your insurance. And I was, I was in the, I was in the ER like a, 10 days later. It's like, let's do it right now. <laughs> so for me, um, it's it, mine is congenital. Obviously I know some instances you, you might develop a limb, limb length discrepancy. Like say if you had a hip surgery or if you broke your femur or something, sometimes it heals shorter and people develop a limb length and discrepancy that way. I was born with mine. We didn't discover it until I was about probably somewhere between five and seven years old. That took a while actually. Um, and so I started going to a local children's hospital afterwards to try and figure out what to do about that and what the uh, long-term implications of my discrepancy were going to be. Um, the interesting thing about my discrepancy is not like it's not necessarily a unique case, even though even though limb length uh, limb length discrepancies are somewhat unique among the general population because they don't affect everybody, at least not to the same degree. Obviously, there's other long-term implications with it, like arthritis and uh, my ankle joint on that on that left side developed somewhat abnormal normally because of the discrepancy me walking around on my toes most of my childhood but uh 14 the discrepancy was a little over two inches so um i mean it was at that time it was causing me pain but it 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 was about to mm -hmm. so um we went and this was in the late 90s so we went to a couple different places and at that time lengthening was using the ilazarov procedure with the external fixator um, 
last year. My wife jokes that turned 40 and your body basically said, forget this. I'm not working anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when all of a sudden I couldn't uh, go upstairs. I couldn't run. I couldn't push off that leg without severe knee, knee pain. Yeah. Um, then I went, I talked to the doctor, um, talked to the orthopedic surgeon, um, and he said, yeah, we can do, we can do the lengthening. And of course, by this time, you know, in internal nail, um, internal rod. And so we talked about it, went through it. Um, we ended up doing uh, 24 millimeters in the tibia. Um, that finished in January. Okay. Just last week, I had a, a checkup and um, the my surgeon said, it looks good enough. You can start weight bearing, you can start weaning yourself off of crutches. Um, so that's what I've been doing for the past week is practicing trying to walk. And I tell you, I never thought so much about how you have to bend the different parts of your leg to walk until now. <laughs> like I, I swear I'm overthinking it. below in the comments are you dealing with a leg length discrepancy and if so is it symptomatic enough that it bothers you are you planning on getting a looked at remember treating a big discrepancy early on is key to protecting your joints and your long-term health i hope you found the video helpful if you did go ahead and hit that like button be sure to subscribe and until next time this is victor from cyborg for life signing out peace